G'day guys and gal. The level of salt in the Warhammer 40k community has been steadily dropping these days. I'm seeing a lot less seething nerd rage and a lot more chill. What I'm trying to say is that I feel like the community is at a low level of toxicity, which is always nice. Haven't gotten death threats in quite a while, but some things will never die, such as the prejudice many fans feel towards the glorious Ultramarines. If you're an old fan, you're aware of what I'm talking about. Despite the boys in blue being the literal face of Warhammer, lots of people hate it and continue to hate them, their Primarch, their mums, everything about them. And if you were a newer fan, then you're probably still somewhat aware of this rage towards them. Although it has diminished somewhat in recent times, many fans still roll their eyes and scoff whenever someone picks Ultramarines as their army of choice. Today we'll uncover why people hate the Ultramarines, pointing out the facts of the matter as well as why recent opinions of them have greatly improved. By the end of this video, we will know if the rage boner was justified or if people just got carried away. Let's get into it. To detail the first and most obvious reason why Ultramarines copped a lot of hate, I'd like to use an analogy from Australian politics. This is Josh Frydenberg, the former deputy leader of the former Australian government. Josh was the federal representative of an electorate that was known to vote for his party in large numbers. It was called a safe seat for Josh. Josh was poised to take control of his political party after the election, becoming one of the most powerful people in Australia. However, Josh fucked up. During the election, he got a bit sweaty as his seat was under threat by a neurosurgeon. So Josh did what any dumb shit retard would do. He bought literally every single billboard in the entire electorate and he plastered his face on all of them. He got roving billboards, billboards on people's houses. Fuck, he literally leased the front of businesses shutting down so he could put his face on them. And you know what happened to Josh? The deputy leader of Australia in his stronghold safe electorate? He got smashed and now no longer has a seat in politics. The moral of the story is that people don't want to see your fucking face 24 seven, especially if you're some desperate, balding, corrupt shithead. Same thing happened with the Ultramarines. They are plastered on every single Space Marine box as the demo models. Every reveal has the Space Marines painted in blue and gold. If anything, the release of the Primaris has made this worse, making everything that little bit extra Ultramarine-y. Quite a few new release models that are supposed to be available to any chapter have the Greco-Roman elements to them, which which is unique to the Ultramarines. I'll cover why GW has chosen the Ultramarines as their poster boys in another video, but people are just sick of seeing them. Tying into that point, when new people join the hobby and get their starter kit, they'll feel almost obliged to paint their minis as Ultramarines, as they don't know enough lore to connect with one of the other legions or chapters, and they just kind of see what's in front of them and go off that. This shouldn't really matter, but I can see how this would tick a few people off. People who feel like their chapter has been neglected in favor of the Ultra Wank. The next reason why people would rather cheese grate their balls than play Ultramarines is because of their goody two-shoes nature. Now GW have done a good job of twisting this into a positive, but here is why it originally pissed people off. The Ultramarines were the clean, by the book boys who lacked a bit of flavor as a result. Sure they have their Roman aesthetic, which is cool, but it seemed more like a cosmetic thing rather than a core part of their identity. They didn't seem to have any unique wildcard features or dark secret struggles. They were kind of there doing their straighty 180 thing, which wasn't that exciting. Alpha Boozer actually memed this quite well in his earlier text-to-speech videos, highlighting the community's dislike of them as well as their try-hard, almost cringe persona. There's a reason why I, Kato Sicarius, is voiced as if he had just had his balls crushed between two boulders. To expand on this, when the Horus Heresy ended, Gilliman created the Codex Astartes, which was like a guideline for how Space Marines should act. This made the term play it by the book extremely literal for the Ultramarines. The Codex was also enforced upon the other chapters, which further pissed off other players who didn't want their chapters to be influenced by the boys in blue. However, here is how GW have taken steps to address and fix this complaint. Firstly, there was a scene in recent lore where Gilliman had been revived and was talking to an Ultramarine. Gilliman notices how polished and shiny the Ultramarine's armor is and says, Bro, your armor was fine yesterday. Why did you polish the ever-living shit out of it, you tryhard? And the Ultramarine gets kind of upset and Gilliman feels bad. And he says, okay, sorry, don't worry, looks nice. The interaction ends with the Ultramarine saying, I am an Ultramarine. Trying too hard is the entire point of us, isn't it? This made Gilliman smile. 
If you're going to be the try-hard goody two-shoes, then it's important that you own it, which is what they've done here. On top of that, there are a number of instances in the law where chapters adhering to the Codex Astartes too closely have become predictable and were beaten as a result of this. After all, the Tyranids nearly defeated the Ultramarines at McCrag because the book was outdated and hadn't accounted for the space bugs of death. This shows that playing it by the book in Warhammer isn't always the best way to go about things. Gilliman himself low-key abolished the Codex Astartes upon his resurrection, referring to it now as a set of outdated suggestions and guidelines rather than a strict rulebook. Even Cato Sicarius, who let's face it is a bit of an ass kissing cocksucker, was given a solid character arc, getting traumatized during some incidences in the warp which have made him a lot more grounded and less insufferable. My point is that it's good to see GW recognizing the negative attitude towards the Ultramarines as a result of their mistakes, hence taking steps to fix them. I have spoken to a number of people who hated Ultramarines back in the day, most of them now say that as a result of the better lore, characters and less bullshit ultra wank writing, they are now one of their favourite chapters. So where did all this shit Ultramarine writing come from? A dude known as Matt Ward. There was an era where the Ultramarines were retardedly overpowered. Kato Sicarius defeated a Catan Shard. Marnie's Kalga was able to fucking deadlift a big ass Necron Pylon and also punch an avatar of Kane to death. The greatest insult however was the fact that Matt stated that the Ultramarines were literally the best space marines, the gold standard that other chapters would always aspire to be like yet always fall short and that they all secretly wish that Manius Kalga was their chapter master. Huge fucking bruh. He did a lot of other cook shit, like random lore conflicting trash, overpowered characters, ignoring previously established lore, and even messing with the tabletop game. GW has been steadily retconning quite a lot of his work over the years, because it was so bad. So you can imagine with this guy having an ultra boner for the blue boys, shit would always go sideways. By Matt trying to basically make it canon that the Ultramarines are better than the other chapters, everyone who plays the other chapters, which is you know, a lot of people, suddenly had a very appropriate reaction of, Get fucked, ya dog. That definitely would have been my reaction. This was the peak Ultramarine hate period, with the vast majority of people who still hate the Ultramarines using this as their reference point. For non-Space Marine players, it was little better. As an Eldar player myself, it was grim watching new release after new release just being new Space Marine lieutenants painted in the colors of blue and gold. In the meantime, I was reluctantly painting Guardians and Aspect Warriors that were just as old, if not older than myself. I know Tyranid players continue to feel that pain to this day. Obviously, this is more of a Space Marine issue, not just Ultramarines, but the Ultramarines do seem to be the face of the issue as that's all we ever see. Fortunately, GW have since given the Elder quite a lot of love, which has sated my appetite for now, but that leaves plenty of poor souls with their borderline antique models. Like I was talking about Warhammer with my auntie the other day, as her sons, my cousins, were into it for a while and they gave me their models years ago. She was like, those will probably be worth quite a lot of money now. And I laughed because quite a lot of them were the exact same models that GW sells today. If there's one thing that doesn't gain value with age, it's Warhammer models. Okay, so we've seen why people hate it and continue to hate the Ultramarines, and we have looked at a few solutions GW has tried to implement. Let's check out a few more to determine at what point the Ultramarines came back into the community's good grace. Well, the first stage of unfucking the ultra shit reputation was the departure of Matt Ward. Even non-Ultramarine things that he had tainted were attributed to the Ultramarines, creating this nasty feedback loop. With him gone, GW could begin retconning or just abandoning some of the terrible lore, as well as balancing the wacky rules. Stuff like all other chapters wanting to get fisted by Marnius was no longer a thing. The other chapters started receiving more love whilst the ultra wank fest subsided. However, in my opinion, the big thing that made the Ultramarines cool again was the resurrection of Gilliman. This is pretty ironic, as you'd think that the revival of their dad as Lord of the Imperium and the hero of the setting is the most ultra wank thing in the entire planet, but they made it work. By making Gilliman an extremely engaging and interesting character, whilst extending that good writing to the Ultramarines he interacts with, we get to spend a lot of time with them, exploring their character arcs and culture. The pressure they put on themselves to be the best has really taken its toll on them after 10,000 years, with many Ultramarines and Gilliman himself having been worn down. 
they were shown to no longer be these Mary Sues, losing and requiring the intervention of other factions to survive, including the Eldar. Marnius was also beaten in a fight with Abaddon, which in my opinion would have been a great opportunity to kill him off, but unfortunately GW's balls weren't big enough on that occasion. So by fixing their previous mistakes through better writing, gradual retconning, and less ultra wank, GW successfully changed the public's opinion about the Ultramarines. Was the hate justified, or were people being way overly dramatic about their little pieces of painted plastic? Straight up, it was totally justified. If someone tried to tell me that my dog actually wished it had a different owner, I would tell my dog to bite them in the nuts. It's the same vibe here. I get that everyone has their own favorite faction and chapter, but you cannot show that kind of bias as a law writer. Ironically, by Matt Ward trying to make the Ultramarines the best and most loved faction, he had made them the most hated. In saying that, GW has really done a lot of good work fixing the Ultramarine lore, rules and writing. Gilliman is a joy to read about, with most of the other factions getting plenty of love now. So if you're one of the few remaining people that have nightmares over the boys in blue, rolling your eyes and fingering your ass whenever someone paints an Ultramarine, then my advice is build a fucking bridge and get the fuck over it. Judging something or someone purely on their past and not on the things they've done to improve themselves is very stupid and counterproductive. It's literally cancel culture, except instead of all Ultramarines doing blackface 20 years ago as a joke, they were just mishandled for a couple editions. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only $1 per month, you have access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million Hits. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more ultra shit content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.